Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, I love having a panel of guys. I know, it's awesome. Isn't it fun? It is, and we get to hear about guys and how they grieve and how it's different than women. Yeah, and this is a real thing. You mm -hmm. know, how often do you get to have fathers and sons here yeah. talking? I think this might be our first show doing that. I think it might be. Yeah, and these guys have known each other for a long time, which is another thing that I like. Uh-huh, yeah. So. so, all right, so why don't you introduce them? Here they are. Okay, so let's see. Let me do Jason first. So Jason's right next to you. And he's got the black on. He didn't get the message. <laughs> <laughs> it was plaid. Know, it was I a love, plaid day. I love all the plaid guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason Wendorf Ronicky, I'm going to get that right someday, yeah, right? That's good. You got it. So he's a cer certified yoga instructor. Yep. He's the co-founder of Shine Yoga Center in New uh -huh. Jersey, which is an award-winning yoga center. Sure um, and he speaks and does workshops all over the country uh, about grief, loss, hope, and healing. Next to him is his dad, <laughs> Arnie Wendruff. And Arnie Hi, is Arnie. very involved with the Compassionate Friends. And he also runs a group just for men mm. at his chapter. All right. Which I love. So he's going to have some good ideas for us today, Arnie. So this is, so this is father and son, the son yes. and they lost uh, Lauren. Lauren was Jason's sister. She died in her 20s in a car accident. Arnie's daughter. Okay. Okay, and next to them is Keith Singer. Hey, Keith. Keith is sitting next to his stepfather, Babe, who hey, is babe. Who was like, I hate the word step because he's like a dad to him. Keith has two dads, and this is one of them. Although, I think he's going to bring a, a good perspective, too, though. I agree. I mean, there's, uh, there's just not that much uh, information out there about stepdads and loss and, you know, and step is what he did. He stepped he's into step. this family, and he's the dad. Oh, Mom, I love that. I love that's a positive frame on it, yes. So Babe Miro and Keith Singer, dad, son, and Keith's sister is named Lori. Mm -hmm. She was active military in the Navy, and she died in a car accident in her 20s, and it was Babe's stepdaughter, and Babe did a, a, a YouTube for us, a Compassionate Friends, and he said, you know what? Lori was my stepdaughter, but she was also my daughter, mm -hmm. and I love that. Okay, so we're calling this show Dads and Sons Get Real With Their Grief. Before I forget, Mom, Denise oh, yeah. Daniel at the end is going to sing Don't Know When. She'll close the show with that song. Yeah, and Denise is a bereaved mom who yes. has started writing, writing music again since her uh, daughter died. She's yeah. uh, done a lot of songs for us, and, and we met her at Compassionate Friends. Yeah. All right, so we're calling the show Dads and Sons Get Real With Their Grief. All right, so let's hear about it. How long has it been for you? So it's been 20 years uh, okay. since Lauren passed. And how long has it been for you? 20 years also. Yep. This okay. is so interesting. You guys have got a lot of stuff going on together. Yeah. And yeah. I know that your mom and your wife and your mom and your wife, Michelle and Varda, the women in your lives, they work together and they run the Staten Island Compassionate Friends chapter together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With these guys doing what do you do? Bringing food and? Well, we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What kind of stuff? Well, during the, we have special events. I sell the raffles and set up, you know, when we have picnics, help set up. Okay. You know, um, I know Babe, t on that video we were talking about, he talks about setting up stuff and the things they do in the background. Now tell me, guys, it seems to Heidi and I that men like to do stuff. <laughs> Rather than Actually, we're the, fix we're the fixers, we're the, the doers. Yeah. So that's how it goes. That's it. We're, we're the uh, make it happen. No. Fill in whatever needs to be done and help out how we can. Okay, so tell me, oh, I'm going to really get into it, Heidi. Okay, go for on it. On sibling <laughs> loss. Okay. What was your thought about your parents when your sister was killed? So when, when my sister passed, I'm just trying to think back to, because it's been 20 years, mm -hmm. and so it has been a little bit of a while going back. Um, one thing as a sibling that I noticed was that uh, how my sister got put up on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she was a very difficult person mm -hmm. and a very, you know, she had her like quirks. And, right. and all of a sudden she passes and those seem to kind of disappear. Okay. And I'm like, wait a second, like, wasn't it just a few, you know, months ago that we were like squabbling and this and that? 
And so when she first passed, I know it was very important for me to uh, to to keep her human. Right. Um, to remember that, yes, yeah, she had some really great qualities, mm -hmm. and she was a really wonderful person, but she also had her dark side, too. Mm -hmm. And so really to keep that in balance and in check, not just for myself, but like in the family dynamic. Yeah, it's funny because a friend of mine, Elizabeth DeVita Rayburn, whose brother died over 20 years ago, said, Ted hasn't done anything wrong in over 20, 20 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. They are, they're elevated to the status of God. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and it, early on in my grief, I really had a problem with that. Um, yeah. Even among some of the other siblings, because yeah. I remember the siblings group was just starting out, like to get a foothold um, at that time in the Compassion Friends. And I was like, like, I just can't, like, it just drove me a little nuts to hear about everyone's sibling is wonderful mm -hmm. and the sunshine and the rainbows yeah. that fly, and then, like, but what about the dark stuff that, and, that and we And the normal go sibling stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, we, we love them, but we also fight with them. Yeah. And you know what? If I'm, I am going to invest energy into you, negative energy and positive, because I like, I care about you. Yeah. We didn't always, we weren't always, like, kumbaya in love. In fact, when my brother left, the last thing I said to him was not, I love you. Yeah. Because that's just not how we ended every conversation. Whereas with my parents, I'm more apt to say that than with my sibling. Well, even the last thing with my sister, I was supposed to go see her mm -hmm. uh, at her place down in South Jersey. My wife and I were taking a trip down to Cape May, and we were kind of going past her thing, and we were going to spend a night with her. And she called me up, like, the day before we were like, I'm like, all right, we're all set, right? We're gonna, yeah. and she's like, nope, you're not coming over. Mm -hmm. I gotta work or something. It was something like right. that. And that was like, and I was mad. I was really right. pissed off because I wanted to see her and spend some time with her. And literally a few days later, she was gone. And, and that's so, a normal relationship. Yeah. yeah, Keith, I want you to log in on Keith, this. He's <laughs> nodding his head. Is this the thing? <laughs> what did you, what was your thing about where you were when she was killed? And so I was away to college. Um, for me, um, I think there's, there was several things. One, I didn't initially deal, I think, with the loss. I think for me, I ran back away to school. Um, but I think, so initially, I think it's, it's you're dealing with it yourself, the loss. I was thinking it was dealing with it for me. And then also um, trying to fix it for my mom and my parents. Mm -hmm. So I think ultimately, it was, it was the two parts of, of dealing with this, this loss now and also then having to deal with the, my parents now. Um, How did you try to fix it? Do you remember anything specific? Well, you, you want to just sort of um, don't make any waves. You don't want, you just want to do, you know, um, do anything you possibly can um, to try to make it better for your parents uh, to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it, it goes towards then everything towards them. I think, I think the main focus for me was is for my mom to make sure she was okay. And um, yeah. I wonder, I wonder, Heidi, I know you talk sometimes about how scary it is to see your parents in such distress. Right. And I'm wondering if part of that fixing isn't to try to, um, sure. you know, to see, not to have your parents fall apart. Oh, absolutely. You're in college, yeah. you want them to be. Yeah. So you I think know. part of it is us trying to keep it together and try to, you know, uh, deal with this, deal with it ourselves, but then also we also have you know, dealing it with our parents and watching our parents uh, deal with it. Or, and I think that's the, the, the dual challenge of is, is you have yeah. both pieces going on. Yeah. Jason, I just wanted to make a quick comment about what you said. I, I've always thought that one of the problems, and, and we have talked to a lot of kids who didn't, haven't felt like they could work out their relationship. That's the yeah. problem. You don't get a chance right. Right. to become business. adults yeah. together. You don't get right. a chance to you know, fight it out and and you know work through these things because they're not around to do it with. As you say, Heidi, they're right. supposed to be with you what eighty percent of your life or something. Yeah, I, I have a little thought that I kind of think to myself that I actually have a better relationship with her now than I did when she was living because right. uh, because we're now on the kind of same page and like when she was alive, there were many times we weren't. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, and your and your relationship changes over time. Mm -hmm. I have a a, sib, a sister who we fought like cats and dogs our entire childhood. Mm -hmm. And now that we're older and we have kids and we just have more in common, we have come together and we're best friends. Yeah. So we don't have those opportunities with our siblings, be, you yeah. know, the ones that have died because they're no longer here. So who knows what would have happened in the future. You might have, you might have forgiven Scott for uh, tying the TV set to his bed, hand <laughs> it to his bed <laughs> when yes. you went to college so you couldn't take it. Exactly. Exactly, but but I'm also wondering with Babe because we haven't heard from him. Okay, he was he's the stepfather. How old? How long had you been in this family before 
Lori died, and and well, tell me more about your situation. I know Lori six years. Okay. <clears throat> when uh, when I, we got the call that she uh, had passed, she was in a car accident, and I, I started worrying about Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew Lori, I loved Lori, but I was really worried that Michelle was going to flip out, lose it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, but what about Keith? I was worried about Keith. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen with him. You know, but. I guess I figured he was a guy. He was going to be okay. I, mm. I, 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 I really don't. Well, my thinking didn't go that way. You know, it went to my yeah. wife. Like, and, uh, yeah. I I knew a woman that lost her, her daughter, mm -hmm. and she uh, she gave me some advice. You know, and uh, what was the advice? Take it to the, the compassionate friends. Oh, I like you know? that. Yeah. Okay. She gave me the number, the contact, and yeah. all that. And we uh, we kept going to the meetings. We didn't know if we liked it. You know, on the way home we used to. Are we going to go back to this thing? Yeah, we're going to go back. We're going to see, yeah. And babe, as a stepfather and a step parent, do you feel like you get acknowledged for your own loss, or are people like, "Oh, he was only a stepfather"? In the beginning, it was like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just a guy. I was worried about her, and yeah, it wasn't really my like. I don't know. I just didn't feel. You didn't that feel it like was, it was your loss. Yeah, really. Like, yeah. I expected that everybody would be hugging her and kids. One of her friends gave me a hug one night at the. We sat and shivered, you know. She mm -hmm. says, "Oh, babe, you know, like, it's all right. You know, it's okay." I just, I was more worried about her, like I keep saying. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, Arnie, <laughs> yeah, it, Arnie, were you worried about Varda more, or were you worried about your son? I was worried about both of us mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. that time. Jason was out of the house; he was married already. Right. So, you know, we 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 saw him, but. Not as often as we would like to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, but you know, it, it was we had to worry about ourselves to try to figure out where we're going from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and do you feel that men's grief is different? Did you feel like your grief as a man and what you're seeing at Compassionate Friends is different than the way that the, a lot of women well, share their grief? Over the time, um, you know, I was brought up that big boys don't cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't cry that much at the beginning. Varda was doing mm -hmm. enough crying for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as the years went on, I, you know, um, I very rarely cried at movies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before. After, I would cry at the stupidest thing in movies. Mm -hmm. well, well, I love that movies gave you a place where you could show your emotion. You know, because it's yeah. like, okay, this is a safe place where I can cry and I can just get yeah, into it. It's dark and I can be, yeah, exactly. Because I think guys are given, you guys are given such messages. Big mm. boys don't cry. Suck it up. Walk mm. it off. Right. Stop being a lady. Ladies. <laughs> well, you know, when, the, you know, when people are saying ladies, it's not a positive thing. I mean, there's just a lot of net things about you hiding your grief and, not, and being there for women. The women yeah. in your life, I think. Mm -hmm. Society will do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I've at different times seen um, at Compassionate Friends and, uh, and other places where the guy has got his arm around his wife uh -huh. right. and he's looking at her and mm -hmm. patting her on the back, you know, when trying the guy's there. got that loss, trying to be there for her. And I think rather than, uh, I think sometimes guys see women as their strength. Well, like, right. and like they want to like, see him. Well, like Arnie strong. said, Varda was the one that was grieving for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Some, you know. Right. Yeah. So, so you're going to do that that work for me. So, if you had uh, some advice, babe, for a stepdad who's lost a kid, what would it be? Well, I know the compassionate friends helped us a lot. That would be the first thing I would tell them to go find a group. You know, mm -hmm. it did a lot for us. You know, it yeah. still does every day. You know, just love your wife. You know. Well, what kind of things do you think have been done for you, babe, with the Compassionate Friends? Like, what exactly did they do that helped you? I used to just sit there. Yeah. You know, I would introduce us and let, she, she was listening, you know, so I see her change a little bit. It was starting to get a little better, you know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what it did, but it, it was so Just it was sitting working, there you know? with other people, and I know that you're very involved with the step-parents at Compassionate Friends now. And just <coughs> being in a room with other Stepfathers, I imagine, is healing. I, I think that's a good point. Oh, pardon me. I'll let you. This one. <coughs> we um, had a bunch of them in the beginning. Yeah. They were going to start a step parent meeting and all this, but they yeah. never really got involved with it. You know? 
Mm -hmm. You know, I think that men just sitting there mm -hmm. in a group is an amazing thing because if you look at all of the literature, if you look at the groups, if you look at TV, it's generally women mm -hmm. who yeah. are there. Right. And just having a guy sitting there is an amazing, well, you that's know. A fact. The fact that these guys are there will bring in that other you're here guys. Today. Yeah. Right. It'll bring in other guys because guys don't want to walk into a room with just women grieving. Right. If yeah. they see other guys, and it's, they'll, they'll be like, okay, this is a safe place for me to be. Right. We so, have a so, lot of men in our group. Okay. When, when we started um, in the beginning 20 years ago, if we had three or four guys at the meeting, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Now we get 15. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, right. Because they see other guys at exactly. the meeting. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, from my perspective, just continuing to be there, um, where I think some maybe some people would, would run uh, like you said, you wanted to stay, uh, they were going to start up the meeting, but not, you know they didn't really stick around. So I think it would, I think it's important to stay um, to stay in support, um, and I appreciate that. It helped. I think it helped me knowing that there was somebody there uh, strong for my mom. It allowed me to go, um, not have to do as much or do it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I, to me, I ran back to college, but I, I ran knowing that she, there was somebody there that strong. That babe was there. Yeah, do you absolutely. And, do you and babe keep, ever talk together about Lori? I'm just curious. Um, I think we all do. I okay. think I think yeah. one of the things with Compassionate Friends has helped us get to that point where we're comfortable to talk about um, talk about my sister and, mm -hmm. and, and, and and not be sad. So I think yeah. now it's it's changed over time where we now can have, you know, we can talk about my sister and, and it be... And, and happy memories, mm -hmm. or also realistic, right? Yeah, so yeah, we talk yeah. about the fact yeah. that we don't have to necessarily say my sister, my sister wasn't an angel. We yeah. can talk about the real, right. the real stories, the real and person. you know all the little feisty and yeah, the phones going across the hallway, being yeah. smashed. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, welcome to sibling, the life of a sibling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I love it, and. Uh, just th that you guys are willing to come and sit here today yes. with yeah. us and on this TV show. And what about together? Jason and Arnie? Do you guys talk about Lauren or, or not really? Well, I've always talked about her in the present moment. Okay. So I don't, like, I don't even think about her in the past. Yeah. You know, I th I've always talked about her in the present. I think also more lately we've been able mm -hmm. to talk to her, uh, talk about her mm -hmm. a little bit more well, open. the first Vaughn and I were concerned because the first, I guess, about seven or eight years, Jason, we, we'd never discussed Lauren. Right. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know right. It, the name never came up. Mm -hmm. But after something happened after eight years mm -hmm. that he started opening up, we started opening up and talking a lot more. Mm -hmm. And when we get together, we'll talk her about her and things that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, with her and you know, and things that she did. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, and it, and it's totally normal. And I'm both hearing kind of themes that initially there wasn't a lot of conversation. As Keith right. knows from doing the panel he does at Compassionate Friends, siblings often do not sit down and have conversations with their parents yeah. about their sibling that's not here anymore. That's not physically here. I mean, and when my mom would bring up Scott, sometimes I wouldn't even respond. I would just ignore, you know, and it's not because I didn't hear her. I wasn't going to say, oh, thank you for bringing up the memory. Let's talk more. Because I didn't want to upset her, or maybe I had to go on with my life and try to live it. So I think parents get really worried sometimes about, okay, how are these guys doing if they're not talking? So it wasn't the physical distance, because yeah. we've always been within like a half an hour. Yeah. It was really just a that little bit of that That could even be more difficult. When Heidi <laughs> left, I, didn't even, I don't think I even noticed she was leaving for that reason. Yeah. And I probably didn't have to worry about her because she wasn't around. You had no idea it was for that reason. <laughs> I didn't. I just found out. I, just found out. <laughs> I, was saying, I think it's, it's hard for us to do both. I think when yeah. when well, when the parents are around, I think that we stop dealing with it and well, then we deal was, with our parents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was losing myself right. in their grief yep. because mm -hmm. I was so worried about them. You know, I love the fact that you just said eight years. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it, it is so good for people that are watching this show yeah. to hear that Heidi moved out and left for three years. You guys got together after eight. I mean, it's just a, a great thing to know that healing happens over yeah. over time, and yeah. and we become different people, and they become part and, of our and, life. And, and our people grief changes and transforms yeah. over time. Yeah. 
And people say, oh, well, uh, they're not over it yet. And I'm like, I don't want to get over Scott. Right. You don't yeah. want to give over your the kids. I mean, they be, you know, it just all becomes Yeah, you want to get over real. the intense pain, and I, and I am mm -hmm. over the intense pain. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering for all the guys out there that are just wondering, like, they aren't going to ask what helps. They're not going to ask anybody how to, how to get help. But what, what kind of things would you tell them about what maybe helps has helped you? Just give us a quick. Yeah, yeah I, I think, well, that's what really, my yoga practice really mm -hmm. was the thing that got stronger with, with the loss because uh, it got me more into my body and more into my breath. And it, it's something physical I can actually do to, to feel different immediately. I like that. How about you, honey? Uh, I was, we went to Compassionate Friends, and I wasn't really hot, hot on coming back. Mm -hmm. But I go every, every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't say much, I sit there and listen and Love I think it. just... What a gift. What a yeah, gift. just yeah. going to yeah. compassion yeah. for you. I think being around others um, in a similar situation, so others that have lost a sibling, I think has allowed me to, you know, just hearing other people um, has allowed me to open up and deal with deal with it myself because naturally definitely was not my personality uh, I didn't go to I didn't go to TCF until at least five years uh, mm -hmm. after so mm -hmm. it definitely took time and and but, you run the sounds of sibling yep, program on it. Facebook yep, for everybody yeah. you can go find give, that yeah give them the Facebook all the siblings so out there a, that need to join this Facebook page sure it's a private group on Facebook just look for sounds of the siblings um, and ultimately it's just a group for just those that lost a sibling it's about 3,000 plus people um, it's private. Nobody outside can see what goes on, but it's it's a place for people around the world. Actually, we have people around the world uh, to connect and talk about uh, whatever it is that you know that, that they're feeling or things that are going on. Um, and, and you know what I love about it, Keith? You don't have to respond. Right. You can just look at all the yep. news feed right. and everybody yeah. else and feel like I'm not alone. Other people are dealing with the same kind of stuff. Sort of validates yeah. what you're it feeling, does. what you're going through. The thing. So a lot of times society will, you, you know, will paint it that it's not normal, right? Why? Right. It's been five years. You're not over it yet, or mm -hmm. right. you still feel this way. You're still having these, you know. Yeah. So I, I think it validates Great. a lot of that. How about you, babe? Well, when I went, I was uh, I was going because of Michelle. Really, I just want to make sure she was okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but over the years. Uh, that group helps so many people. You know? yep. yeah. see, I think I think what I'm hearing here is service. Yeah, that absolutely. eventually you get to the point where service becomes very healing. Do you absolutely. want to give us your website real quick? Sure. Uh, sure. Well, I do work with also essential oils too, mm -hmm. which has also been helpful, and it's. Uh, uh, www.mydoterra.com slash Shine Yoga Center, or they can get in touch with me, Jason, at shineyogacenter.com. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for being on the show today, and I know you're going to inspire a lot of people to realize oh. that you can live through this because it, it is a really horrendous thing to go through. Absolutely, and I think there's a lot of women out there that are worried about their guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they'll also be checking out this show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's okay to be the strong, silent type. Yeah. yeah, and like Arnie said, just as be sitting there and babe, they're just there. Because right. it gives other men permission to be part of these organizations and compassionate friends and you know groups yeah absolutely well we want to thank everybody for uh, watching the show today and we hope you'll tell everyone about it and about open to hope and Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless and now we'll be going out with Denise Ganyalin's song <laughs> My life was going along just fine Everything I wanted seemed to be mine I was happy with every day Bringing me more of the same How quickly things can change When someone you love is taken away I know the sun is gonna shine tomorrow But I can't seem to feel it on my face And I know the world is gonna keep on turning While I'm still hanging on to yesterday and I know I'm gonna smile again, but I just don't.
don't know when I was so happy to surrender my heart You got it from the very start You were all that I dreamed of We had love on top of love It was way more than enough How can it be gone? How do I go on? I know the sun is gonna shine tomorrow but I can't seem to feel it on my face and I know the world is gonna keep on turning while I'm still hanging on to yesterday and I know smile again but I just don't know when so don't tell me that nothing stays the same that much I know I'm reminded every day I know the sun is going to shine tomorrow. But I can't seem to feel it on my face. And I know the world is going to keep on turning while I'm still hanging on to yesterday. Smile again, but I just don't.